Hi guys, my name is Katya. And my name is Bjorn, and this furry creature is Baltasar. And together we live and travel in our self-converted Mercedes 5 d from 1984. We uh, originally shot a van tour in Northern Norway about two months ago, I think. And we decided to finish it when we got back home to Sweden. And now we're in Sweden and we started a project with our shower. So we decided to show you the van tour we made in Norway. Yeah, so hope you guys like it and let's take a look. So, some of you might wonder what this is. This is uh, Baltasar's own table. So he can eat from a higher position because he's quite tall. So he has problems eating. If you put the balls on the floor like this, he won't really reach it and will be annoying for him to eat. So we just put the balls up here instead. And he can eat as much as he wants to. We used to have the balls in between the seats in the cabin, but uh, they were a little bit like in the way you got to jump over them all the time and yeah, it was not practical. So we decided to take them away because we want access to the cabin as we please. Up here we built a shelf so we could hang our speaker system in and the top part we use as a storage for all kinds of bits and bobs that we want to store. Up here. And uh, we also installed a safe, which is uh, beneath the passenger seat, and we welded it to the frame. So I would like to see someone run away with that. Uh, it's also for safety, so we could secure the seat properly, uh, so it don't go flying if something happens. And um, we made this. We put in double curtains, two layers of curtains, just for like insulation. It's uh, very nice if you're inside with the heat on you can just close these ones off like all the way both sides so that keeps the heat in which is um, yeah, good and economical <laughs> so the living area right behind the driver's seat we have Baltzar's bed uh, we made him some space because he's quite big so he needs his own space in the in the van we originally wanted to have like a tiny room here for a shower and a toilet but uh, we decided not to do it right now because we have Baltasar and he needs his space so we're gonna postpone that for later we have a really good idea about the uh, inbuilt shower in the floor and for now we use a, a mobile toilet a tiny toilet a porta porta we also have some storage for Baltasar food which we have a lot of since he eats a lot and then we made some shelves for random storage, whatever we need to put in there. And uh, Balsa has his own shelf with all his stuff. And we put some hooks up so we can hang some equipment and whatever we use for the day. So that's it. The kitchen area. Up top we have some dry storage for teas, coffee, cereals, cups, everything. Uh, down here we have some drawers for the cutlery and some kitchen tools, etc. We also made a bigger storage over here for pots and pans, frying pans, plates, etc. All the big stuff. And we fitted a fridge in between. It uh, runs on 12 volts solar power, no gas. It's uh, 80 liters big because you get more space if you only have 12 volts instead of the gas burner behind it. We also fitted a sink. It's a two burner with a sink combo that uh, we got running water with the 12 volt pumps in the back. So it's just to use as you please. And we installed a max air fan, which we currently use as a kitchen fan, also as a ventilation because we was we were thinking of having a kitchen fan specifically for the kitchen but so far we haven't really needed it this one is really powerful so it works really great everything just goes out and it's also good if it's really hot outside this one will set we can set it to a specific temperature and will open and ventilate so it doesn't get super hot in here for Baltzar's sake 
this kitchen we actually modified from uh, IKEA drawers. Uh, we made it a little bit less deep. It was uh, 60 before and we took 10 centimeters off to get some extra space in between the closet and the kitchen. If somebody's cooking and somebody wants to have something in the closet, you can easily do that. The balsar goes in the back or whatever. You can do that without you're not in the way for each other. It's easy to be two persons in between here. We put up a spice rack for a little bit of spices and stuff and cook food. And we have our really huge coffee maker because we love coffee. So it's a big must for us to have a nice coffee maker. So we can make a lot at the same time. So we also fitted the alarm system which has two sensors. It's one for narcosis gas in the top of the van because it starts from the top. And then we have one for the cooking gases, which you use for the cooking stove and everything. And those ones start from the bottom. So it's way down there. And it also detects carbon monoxide. If it's too much, it will go off. And it's connected, so it triggers a shunt on the cooking gases on the bottle. So it will actually turn the main valve off to all the gases. So if either sensor goes off, we have to reset that shunt, but it's just a safety precaution. It's the same, it's an inbuilt feature. If we have an accident with the car, it will also shut off all the gases so nothing can leak. So on the opposite side of the kitchen, we have the wardrobe. It's our main storage. We use it for everything. We have our jackets in here, our clothes, our guitars, everything is in here. Uh, we also Put these pockets on the doors to have some extra space they're a real space saver it's really easy easy to access just to open one door and they're there really practical and on the outside we put a full body mirror so it creates a little bit of space in the bus and it's nice to have a big mirror <laughs> right next to the wardrobe we have a little seat which also is a storage space and a foldable table that we can fold away if we need to or have it up so we have a nice sitting area it was important to us to be able to sit and work or sit and eat and stuff we like to have a table in the bus but we're thinking of doing it a little bit bigger so we're probably gonna redo it one day because we need a little bit bigger table we figured out after living with this for four months <laughs> so some stuff you make up on the way so in the back we have six shelves two for katja and two for random stuff in the back and two for me uh, which we have our clothes and stuff in and we also have our sofa slash sitting area back here on our bed which we can pull out and make every day. We wanted to have a pull out bed because during the days, if you have it as a couch, it feels really spacious in the car. We, we think a permanent bed would have been taking too much space. So we like that we can choose. We could just pull it out and use it as a permanent bed, but we choose not to. But we can if we want. <laughs> so here we have our diesel heater. It takes in air from the bottom and blows it out here hot. We can aim this nozzle any way we want. And this is a support bracket for the bed when we pull it out fully. So here we have our control panels. This one is for the temperature control for the diesel heater. And this is the Victron Energy console for the batteries and the solar power. The batteries are located underneath our bed uh, in the trunk. So let's go have a look. Almost forgot the most modern part of the bus are steps. They're 12 volts and automatic. You can just fold them in and out. And uh, we modified them. It's the two uh, 50 centimeters steps that we uh, changed a little bit to fit the door so it's the same width it looks a little bit better and Baltasar has a way easier time going 
in and out on these steps than the narrow ones. So that's why we did it. So the trunk of horrors. Here we got uh, two five kilos bottles of gas. Uh, it's very practical because when we run out of one, we always have one spare and we know it's time to change. And we also have a canister of gasoline for our recently bought generator, which is really good to have as a backup. And we have some tools for the bus or whatever might happen. It's good to have. And then we have the solar coming in for the right there, going via the MPPT charger to the batteries. And then there's a huge converter on top, which we use for our 230 volts electronics in the car. So the whole trunk is a work in progress, but um, basically the solar panels comes down to these fuses, moves on to the MPPT charger, which charges the batteries we have behind here. There are two, two NORAC 12 volts batteries with 250 amp hours each. So we got a total of 500 amp hours in our system. And those ones supply the converter, which we use to run all our 230 volts uh, appliances in the bus. And we also got this gasoline electrical generator just in case as a backup on the backup. We also have a tiny charger for the batteries when we're hooked up like at the camping or something. Just just as a backup. So um, yeah, that's that. Let's take a look at the solar panels and the roof rack. So the roof rack, it's homemade. Bjorn made it in two parts, so it would be easier to disassemble it if necessary. The part with the wooden deck we use mainly for storage at the moment. We have a kayak for fishing, our spare tire and four storage boxes for things that we don't use that often, such as winter shoes, rubber boots, rain clothes and whatnot. On the front part of the rack we have two solar panels. These are LG full black, 330 watt each, so we have 660 watt in total. Many people ask us where we bought our sun visor. It's uh, almost impossible to find a used sun visor like that. So this sun visor is a new production. We ordered it from a company in Denmark. We will link it in the description below. It was easy to install and the quality is pretty good. The guys who manufactured it were in touch with us during the whole process and we knew exactly when it was ready and on its way to us. We also installed a few extra lights on the roof rack around the bus and on the bumper. So we installed the light bar in front. Our original lights are very bad, so having these lights is a huge improvement, worth the money, especially if you're traveling above the polar circle during autumn winter season. We also have a few lights on the sides of the roof rack, in case it's dark and we need to be outside. And since this model doesn't have any reverse lights, we decided to install new ones, so we can see everything properly behind the bus when we reverse. Many people wondered about the underglow, so it's a red LED light loop. We cannot change the color, but that's the color I wanted to have. It has worked out pretty well so far. We've driven with it for about seven months now and it's still working. It has a silicone casing, so it doesn't get damaged and can withstand stone chips and dinks. And uh, by the way, it's not legal to drive with underglow in Sweden, but we have a switch so we can turn it on and off when we want. We do not drive with it, of course, but we use it when we're camping and sitting outside during the nights. We will link all the lights and the sun visor in the description below. So this is it. Hope you guys liked it. Let us know what you think. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. And we'll show you our upcoming video about the shower. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so much.